Liver health is declining worldwide, and not only among people that unusually abuse their livers, like alcoholics or athletes that use PEDs, but also among the general population. In particular, the incidence of fatty liver disease, called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, NAFLD, is, has been on the rise in the West and in the East for the last few decades. And non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is thought to cause both uh, steatosis of the liver, it's a kind of inflammation of the liver that's called NASH for short, as well as eventually a progression to cirrhosis of the liver, which is a kind of scarring of the liver toward the end of that pathology. NAFLD, though, is also thought to cause liver cancers, particularly the most common liver cancer called hepatocellular carcinoma. In this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about how aspirin may protect you from the development of liver cancer. But before I do, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, like the video, and comment on the video for the sake of the algorithm that is continuing to elude me. Let's get started. Now, aspirin is the most commonly used non steroidal anti-inflammatory drug in the world. Probably most of you watching this have used aspirin before or know somebody that takes a baby aspirin daily. By the way, non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs tend to be called NSAIDs for short. A 2021 meta-analysis of 19 studies found that aspirin use was protective for the development of liver cancer, particularly among those that are considered at-risk populations, including those with viruses like Hep C, Hepatitis C, as well as those with alcoholic fatty liver disease, and that state of inflammation of the liver that comes following non-alcoholic fatty liver disease called NASH, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. So aspirin use was found in this meta-analysis to be protective for all of those at-risk populations in their development of liver cancer. But was the protection conferred by aspirin consistent across the years of use? Well, interestingly, and this may not hold for people that do not have viruses that cause liver cancers, but a study on uh, viral carriers of causes of liver cancer, like hepatitis C, found that aspirin use within a year conferred tremendous protection against the development of liver cancer. In fact, the protection was up to 67% less incidence of liver cancer within a year. And the aspirin use continued to confer that protection up to 10 years after the beginning of aspirin use. Interestingly, after 10 years, the aspirin begins to become actually harmful and reverses its protection. Now, authors theorize that the reason why is likely that in the first few years, the aspirin uses inhibition of immune activity likely conferred a benefit toward the development of hepatocellular carcinoma, HCC, the liver cancer, from viruses. But over about a 10 year period, the inhibition of the immune system ends up harming the host, the human being's ability to defend themselves from the virus itself. So that's where it potentially reverses. So it's likely that people that do not carry viruses that cause liver cancer may not have this exact reversal after 10 years, but still interesting to talk about. Now, what about doses? It seems that doses north of 100 milligrams have rapidly diminishing marginal returns in terms of their ability to confer protection from liver cancer. So we would want to stay below 100 milligrams of aspirin a day. So how exactly does aspirin confer this protection from the development of liver cancer? Let's talk about mechanisms briefly for those that are interested. First, it seems that aspirin's inhibition of the COX-2 pro-inflammatory uh, pathway is causal in its protection from liver cancer. And it seems COX-2 plays a causal role in the development of liver cancers. It also seems that aspirin's inhibition of the Wnt beta catenin pathway is also uh, protective towards liver cancer development, and the Wnt beta catenin pathway seems to be causally involved in the etiology of liver cancer. So there's two pathways there inhibited that we know are directly related to liver cancer. We also know that aspirin has an antiviral and antioxidant effect that depend on its upregulation of superoxide dismutase 1, SOT1, and its inhibition of inducible nitric oxide synthase, INOS. And we also know that um, aspirin has an inhibitory effect on the nuclear factor kappa B or NFKB pro-inflammatory gene transcription pathway. And interestingly, via inhibiting nuclear factor kappa B, it actually inhibits the deposition of collagen in the liver, which is one of the processes by which fibrosis or cirrhosis of the liver happens. Now that we've reviewed some of the pathways that may be involved in how aspirin confers protection from liver cancer, let's discuss briefly some synergies that aspirin has with other drugs or phytochemicals. So for example, there's a phytochemical called berbamine. Berbamine actually is a cal calcium channel blocker, and it has synergies when applied with aspirin because of its modulation of AMP kinase-dependent activation of CREP. 
In fact, metformin does something similar when combined with aspirin. Metformin's inhibition of the phosphorylation of AMP kinase and its inhibition of the activation of mTOR produces a synergistic effect with aspirin against liver cancer cells. Finally, and most importantly, the main drug used to treat liver cancers, sorafenib, which is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor, it comes along with a peculiar uh, issue of drug resistance among people. Usually within three months, liver cancer patients start to develop drug resistance to sorafenib, which is by far the best, I think, chemotherapeutic approach to dealing with liver cancers. So. Maintaining sensitivity to sorafenib is very important. It was found that aspirin can increase sensitivity to sorafenib by decreasing glycolytic enzymes, including PFK, which may be the most interesting effect from aspirin overall. So the long and short of it is aspirin, particularly less than 100 milligrams taken daily, may confer protection from the development of liver cancer among at-risk populations, including those that have slightly fatty livers, which is a large percentage of the population of the United States, as well as those that may be predisposed to other ways, like myself, my grandmother passed away from liver cancer herself at a young age. Anyway, guys, I hope this was helpful for you, and I hope to see you again next time. Thank you. <music>